All right, in this video, we are going to look at how to find, or rather I should say approximate uh, limits using a graph and a table on the TI-84. And the main goal of this video is, uh, you know, there are faster ways of finding limits. We can use, we're gonna use direct substitution and we're gonna realize we have a problem, but you can use algebraic techniques to get this answer much faster. However, you still wanna become comfortable with using graphs, manipulating the graphs, using the zoom feature, the window, feature. You also want to become comfortable with working with your table on the TI-84, manipulating that table. That's the main goal of this video, but we're also going to explore the idea of a limit here too. So we're going to approximate this limit. And it turns out the, the approximation that we get is going to be the limit, which you'll see later on in the course. But uh, we got the limit here as x approaches negative 1 of this rational function. And one of the best techniques to always do is just try to plug the number in and see what you get. So we get negative 1 squared. I'm plugging negative 1 into x. So plus 8 times negative 1 and then plus 7 right there. That's our numerator. Our denominator, we got negative 1 squared plus 6 times negative 1 and then we got plus 5. And let's just work all this out. So negative 1 squared is 1. Uh, 8 times negative 1, that's going to be subtract 8 uh, plus 7. Denominator, 1. This becomes minus 6. Just watch your signs there. And plus 5. And if you work all this out, 1 minus 8 is negative 7. Plus 7 gives us 0 up top. That's okay, but look at the bottom. 1 minus 6 is negative 5. Plus 5 gives us 0 as well. So that right there, a 0 in our denominator, we have a problem. This is called an indeterminate form. So indeterminate form. So you know, later on in the course, you'll do it much faster by doing like an algebraic approach, factoring and canceling some things out. But again, I want you to become comfortable using the TI-84. So let's go to y equals. Let's go ahead and type this rational, uh, rational function here in. So I'm going to use my numerator denominator, x squared plus 8x plus 7. That's our numerator. Whoops. And let me go back to my bottom. So x squared plus 6x plus 5. Now, I'm just going to zoom in, uh, make this screen nice and big for you. So there's our graph. Let's just go to zoom and 6. Sometimes that's the best spot to go ahead and zoom to, to see if you get a nice, this is a nice visual representation of our graph. And just remember, before I move on, we're letting x approach negative 1. That's what we're trying to find here. All right, so one thing we can do right off the bat, using a graph, we can press trace. Now what trace is going to do, it's going to give you a cursor and it's going to put it somewhere on your curve, uh, typically somewhere right around your y-axis. And we can go to the right because I want to let this number x approach negative 1. So I'm scrolling to the left because this number, negative 0.4545, is getting closer and closer and closer to negative 1. Notice it's almost negative 1. And I'm seeing this y value. This is what we, we want to think about our limit being close to. So 67 over 45. You may have a decimal here, but 67 over 45 if you divide that, you get like negative 1.488888. So you might say, okay, well, what about 1.5? Is that our limit? It may be. It turns out it is, but I'm going to show you many ways of us uh, getting more comfortable with using the calculator and seeing that that limit is going to be 1.5. Um, let's get a little bit closer. Well, notice if I went to the left one more time, I'm actually over negative 1, or not over, I'm just to the left of negative 1, and we got 98 over 65 here for our limit, or our y value, that's 1.5076 blah 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 if you divide that in your calculator. So we're hovering somewhere around 1.5. Well what we can do, we can actually get these numbers quite a bit closer too. We can go to zoom, we can go to zoom in, number two, and if you didn't move your cursor, that, that cursor now is actually not on the curve anymore. When you go to zoom and zoom in, what the calculator is going to be waiting for now, it's going to want you to put that cursor somewhere. So I'm going to put it down there pretty close to my curve, and I'm going to zoom in right about there. So when you press enter, it's like Google Maps. You're zooming in closer to your house. So we've zoomed in on the curve. Now, be careful. You have to press trace again because right now, notice I'm not on my curve anymore. I want to be on my curve and I want to let this x value approach negative 1. So to get back on the curve, we press trace. Now we're back on the curve and let's see if we can get a little bit closer to negative 1. Since I'm to the left of it, I want to move to the right. So, um, you know, boom, look at that. We're a little bit closer to negative 1. We get 263 over 175. 
again, we're around 1.5. It is 1.5. I just want you to understand you can adjust this however you want. Um, let's get on the right side of it. We're just below negative one here. That's 397 over 265, and we get 1.49811, blah, 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 blah. We're pretty close to 1.5. So just simply using the zoom feature and moving your cursor where you want to zoom into, and then you got to remember to retrace, and you can get closer and closer and closer to negative one. I can get even closer if I wanted to. I'm gonna go to zoom. I'm gonna go to zoom in one more time just to emphasize this, and I, you know, I'm gonna let it stay right there, and I can actually move my x value. Let's move our x value. Well, right about there, and um, yeah, I'm gonna press enter on that. I'm gonna zoom in on that spot. See how zoomed in we are now? It's almost like you were viewing the world, you zoom in on your state, and then you're zooming in on your house. Now we gotta press trace and check this out. Let's see how close we can get to negative one now. I mean, look, negative 0.994. I mean, think about money, that's 99 cents. Um, that's almost a freaking dollar. But anyway, we're moving along this curve and I wanna get as close to negative one as I can. That's pretty doggone close to negative one, just like that's doggone close. That's pretty much negative one if you think about it. Let's type in that Y value there and see what our limit's close to. 1,583 divided by 1,055. 1.500, blah, blah, blah. So pretty much I'm saying, hey, it's 1.5. Now, remember that indeterminate form? We don't see a hole, and there's actually a hole in this graph, and that's what I wanna move on to next. So we, we've gathered this idea of saying, okay, hey, we've looked at a graph, we've zoomed in on the graph, and it looks like we're pretty doggone close. Um, let me see if I can move this over here. Looks like we're pretty doggone close to this being pretty much 1.5, and I'm gonna show you this further with the table. This is where the table's gonna come in handy. So we've looked at the graph. Um, I'll tell you what, let me show you one more thing. I mentioned it to you. Let me show you the window. Now, what the window does, if I go back to, if I press window now, see these X mins, X max, Y mins, Y maxes? It's showing the lowest X on the calculator screen. That's showing the highest X on the calculator screen. This is the lowest Y on the calculator screen. This is the highest Y, and you can adjust these other things as well, but I'm not gonna mess with them. If I go to zoom in six, it's going to rechange that window. Cause now the biggest X is 10, the smallest X is negative 10, the biggest Y is positive 10, the smallest Y is negative 10. So if I go back to window, notice those values. The smallest X, negative 10, the biggest X, positive 10, et cetera, et cetera. So the window's changing, but you can actually manipulate this window yourself. Um, so let's just mess around with that. Now notice, again, we're at zoom six, but if I go to my window, and I say, okay, my X min, let's make it like negative um, 1.002, something like that. Let's make our uh, X max, let's make it negative 0.998. I'm just making up some numbers. Notice these two numbers are really close to negative one. So we're really zooming in on that X value, but we have to be careful. We have to make sure we make our Y value um, work correctly too. Now if I go and press graph right now without changing anything else, you're gonna see that. <laughs> oh, check it out. We can see a hole here. Hmm, interesting. You don't see that too often, but uh, I like that because there is a hole there. We're gonna see that in the table in a second. Now we can adjust our Y values as well. Um, we don't have to, but I'm gonna do it anyway. We were hovering somewhere around 1.5, so how about I make my Y min um, 1.49 and I make my Y max 1.51. So that way we, we can get that curve look back. We should get a little curve look. Let's see how much of a curve look we actually get. But notice 1.5 does fall somewhere in between here. So if I press graph, you, you slightly see a decrease. But really it's no different than us doing that zoom in while ago. So if we press trace, um, right now, Boom, I don't know if you noticed that a second ago, but when we were at negative one, notice it doesn't give us a Y value because really it's indeterminate. We can't plug negative one into that function. So I like seeing that hole there. Um, but notice, look at all these Y values. So negative 1.000091, that's doggone close to negative one. What's our limit pretty close to? What's our Y value somewhere around 1.5? Let's go on the right side. And as you can see, we're getting pretty much the same thing. These numbers here, X is approaching negative one, that limit, that Y value is getting doggone close to 1.5. I really, I'm really glad I went to this window feature because um, we can actually see the hole. There is the hole in the graph, and again, 
we see that because this, uh, when x is negative 1, we are dividing by 0. That's that indeterminate form we did back here. So I hope that's all kind of melting together and, and working together as one piece. Now, the next thing, our table. We can also get the same information from our table. But what you see here, you may see decimals. Um, I wonder if I have my calculator set on something to be a little bit weird. I uh, don't see it. Okay. Because most of the time you do see decimals over here on your table. Well, I'm going to just press in second and graph to get to my table. Now we want to let x approach negative 1. Well, if I come over here to my x and I scroll to negative 1, notice we get an error because it's indeterminate. It's, that's an indeterminate form. We can't plug negative 1 into that function. But these numbers here, these numbers aren't close to negative 1. Sure they are. Negative 2 is close to negative 1, but I want to get real close to negative 1. So one way we can do that is go to our table setup. Table setup is second window. Let's tell our table to start at negative 1. And then let's do our delta table, our change in our x values. That's really what this means. How much do you want your x value to change? If you recall, before, let me go back to, let me cut my uh, tablet back on. I think the battery's about to die on it. But uh, notice these change in these x values. It's changing by 1 because we're going negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, etc. So we're going in, in values of 1. But if we go to our table setup and we tell our table to start at negative 1 and we make the change like 0.01. Not 1, but 0.01. If I go back to my table now, notice I'm not going negative 1, 0, 1, 2. I'm actually going in increments of 0.01. 0.01 this way, 0.01 this way. And look at these y values. These y values, now we got some decimals. This is what I wanted to see. We're getting some y values that are approaching 1.5 on both sides of this negative 1. So, yeah, there's another way. We're getting that same number that we've been talking about this whole video, 1.5. It looks like as we get close to negative 1, as x gets close to negative 1, we're approaching a y value of 1.5. We can make this even closer. We can do, uh, let's start our table at negative 1. Let's do our delta table as 0.001. That's to the nearest tenth, hundred thousandth. Now, if we go back to our table, notice we got even more decimals. And look how close these values, as we get close to negative 1, as x gets close to negative 1 from here, or as x gets close to negative 1 from this way. Look at our y values. They're getting doggone close to 1.5. And we can be pretty confident, though this we haven't learned the techniques yet, like the algebraic techniques, the, the definition, or the, the, the proof, the way to prove this. Um, but nonetheless, it is 1.5. And one more thing about your table. What you can also do is you can just not even worry about any of this junk and you can go down here to independent and put it on ask and you can ask for, you can get, type in values of x into your table and get the y values out of it. So I'm cutting this thing to ask and let's go back to our table. Now our table's clear, nothing's wrong. Let's let x get close to negative one. So how about negative point What's that pretty much? That's pretty much negative one. And notice we get a, a y value of pretty much three halves. It's not exactly three halves, even though that's what the calculator is spitting out, but what is three divided by two? Three divided by two is 1.5. That's enough right there to say, hey, I'm confident that my answer is, uh, or my limit as x approaches negative 1 is going to be right around 1.5, and it is. Because notice it says over here x is negative 1, when in actuality we typed in negative 0.99999. Calculator does do some rounding sometimes. Let me just try negative 0.99 instead of, okay, check out what that gives you. 601 divided by 401. 1.49875, blah, 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 pretty much 1.5. Let's try something on the other side of negative 1. How about negative 1.01? That's getting close to negative 1. Let's press Enter. Check it out. 599 over 399. What's 599 divided by 399? 
1.50125. We're seeing those same numbers around 1.5. But what I wanted to do here is I wanted to show you, you know, several different ways. We've looked at the graph. We've looked at how to zoom. We've looked at how to change our window manually. And then what we've come back and done here these last few minutes is we've looked at our table, manipulating our table. Just remember, you can always go back to table setup. If you set this thing back to auto, what auto will do is it will automatically generate your table for you, and then we're getting all those values back um, based on whatever delta delta table, whatever change in X we applied to it, and we can tell it where to start. So there's, there's many ways here of manipulating your calculator, graphing screen, and your table to approximate these limits and to actually pretty much get the limit. And there you have it. That's... Uh, Several ways of finding or approximating limits using a graph and a table on a TI-84. And that's it for this video. Hope it helped.